My name is Linda Caldwell. I'm actually retired and have been retired for 12 years. Although once I retired from paid work, I found other work that I could do. I was a member of the Canadian Forces for about 37 years. When I first graduated from university, I, I did have a job, but I felt like I was overeducated for what I wanted to do. I applied for another job and they said, you need experience. Well, I thought, ah, the military will provide me some experience. I joined for what I thought would be five years experience. And before I knew it, it was 20. And then before I knew it again, it was 37 and I was retiring after one of the most satisfying careers I think one could have. You know, people laugh about fire and forget. Well, the military doesn't do that. They give you the training that you need and the development that you need to go from one challenge to the next. I grew up next to Base Gage Town. So I, I used to see the army. I saw it as a very disciplined and organized group. When I joined the Canadian Forces, I found that they were maybe not quite so disciplined and organized as I thought, but they were still pretty organized and I really appreciated that. I guess I believed that the Army, the military, the three services were really serving the country and I was drawn to that. I grew up in a very small community where citizenship meant a lot and helping your neighbor meant a lot. And I saw that in the military, working together. Uh, and that's one of the things that attracted me. It can be very lonely, uh, even, you know, as a single person who's used to living alone. Uh, and I used to find myself sometimes among, well, 500 people being alone. You come together and you learn the camaraderie. You become kind of an extended family working together. Remembrance Day is, uh, for me, it's one of the best days of the year. I, I feel like it's the beginning and it's the end of my year because I, I started remembering what people have done for me, the, whether they served and died or served and came home. And it's the beginning of that new year. And I think, what am I going to do to make that sacrifice? worthwhile. And so I, I like to think that I do active remembrance. I take some time and I'm, I'm, I'm quiet for a few, an hour or so on, in, on Remembrance Day. And then I go out and try to find young people or even some of the older people who maybe haven't had the, the personal story of, of being deployed with military and, and what that means and, and try to Tell that story and tell it forward and listen to the stories of the veterans. And some of them have remarkable stories. So then when I come back to the end of the year, again, I start with remembering and say, okay, I, I remember the sacrifice, but what did I do this year to roll that forward and make sure that we're always remembering? I served uh, almost two years in Egypt and close to Israel in the Sinai. I remember one time being out on the Sinai Desert driving at night and uh, we kind of got off the road a little bit, got a little lost, and all of a sudden two Egyptian soldiers jumped up with rifles and we didn't know what was going to happen. We had to stop, of course. Uh, as it turns out, we were about to enter a minefield and they were just trying to stop us from doing that. So with their help, we got back on the right road and, and managed to get back home that night. It wasn't quite so easy for my parents because we had grown, uh, we lived in a small community. And, and I remember my parents would be saying, oh, you know, so-and-so is asking about you and they want to know where in the world are you now? <laughs> yeah, serving overseas was a, uh, was a real adventure, but it was also a, a time of growth. It was amazing to be on duty with the members of the armies and militaries of other countries, and to be able to serve with them, have our flag, the Canadian flag, flying with these other nations, and, and to see the respect that the Canadian flag had uh, and that Canadians had uh, in, in those circumstances.